Amen. Turn your Bibles, if you would, to 2 Timothy chapter number 3. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. Excuse me. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. We're going to be looking at two verses, uh, two of them that we've, uh, one of them we've read and then and we looked at already, uh, but uh, the uh, second one we'll be looking at, and uh, I, th- I hope you'll understand why. And uh, by the way, <clears throat> this is the joke, all right? So I don't want you to think that I'm having you turn, you're already in 2 Timothy, but turn with me real quick, like to 2 Kings chapter number 21. 2 Kings chapter number 21. So this is just the joke. It's not the message. And uh, if you walk away and you're like, well, pastor said, <laughs> you weren't listening then, all right? Uh, so uh, uh, 2 Kings chapter number uh, 21. And uh, my wife asked me the other day, uh, said, hey, honey, would you do the dishes? And I said, look, if you want me to do the dishes, you got to show me uh, in the Bible that a man washes dishes. And uh, so she said, you know what? Turn to uh, uh, 2 Kings 21 and read this aloud. And uh, I said, oh, okay, no problem. So I got my Bible out, read uh, 2 Kings chapter 21, verse number 13, where it says, and I will stretch over Jerusalem and the line of Samaria and uh, the plummet of the house of Ahab, and I will wipe Jerusalem as a man wipeth the dish and wiping it and turning it upside down. And uh, so... I did the dishes, so yeah. So, anyways, I'm going to stick with preaching. All right, just just so you know, uh, that may or may not have happened. I, I that probably didn't happen, but but Second uh, Timothy, she goes, oh, it will, amen, it will happen. Second Timothy, chapter number three. Let's stand to show respect to the reading of God's word. If you cannot I understand, you may remain seated. All you married uh, wives, I've just given you an opportunity now to ask your husbands to wash the dishes for you. Amen. And uh, yeah, no problem. You, don't mention it. Amen. So, amen. Second Timothy chapter number three. We're going to read uh, uh, the theme verse for our church, of course, is Second Timothy chapter number three, verse number 14. We're going to read verse number 14 and verse number 15. We'll have a word of prayer and then we'll get right into the message uh, here this morning. Second Timothy chapter number three, verse number 14 and 15 says this. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. I entitled the message today, Continue to Learn. Continue to Learn. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you and praise you for all that you do for us. Lord, we thank you for each one that's able to be here. Lord, we know there are some that are uh, out with sickness. Lord, there are others that are out of town. Uh, Lord, I know there's a couple other folks I just I couldn't even think of. Uh, uh, I didn't write it down for whatever reason, Lord, but uh, I know they're not able to be here uh, for one reason or another. Lord, I know there are some others that possibly even are uh, spiritually sick. Lord, they're just not uh, uh, feeling well spiritually right now. But Lord, we know that you're a good God, you're a gracious God. And Lord, I pray that you'd uh, even encourage them to come back to your house even this, uh, this next uh, time we meet together. But Lord, we are in need of you right now. We need your help. Lord, I cannot do anything uh, here this morning without your help and Lord, without your work and Lord, without your Holy Spirit. Lord, I need an unction of the Holy Spirit this morning, Lord, that would uh, uh, empower me to be able to speak boldly your words, Lord, that the things I say here this morning would be only your words, not my own. Lord, I pray that you'd help me to hide behind the cross, Lord, that uh, your people will only hear from you. I I don't want to say anything that uh, would be offensive, but Lord, we know your Holy Spirit can certainly convict uh, hearts, Lord, that that many times is what will happen. So Lord, I just pray that you'd uh, convict hearts where it's needed uh, conviction. Lord, uh, challenge uh, where there's needed a need of challenging. Lord, I pray for those that, and maybe there's somebody here uh, that does not know you as a personal Lord and Savior. Lord, speak to those hearts as well, Lord, about their need of salvation. I know the message is not about salvation, but Lord, your Holy Spirit is very unique in that he can speak to that individual's heart about their need of salvation today, that today would be the day of salvation for them. Lord, bless now your word. Bless 
uh, our time together. We'll be sure to give you all praise and glory for what you're about to do. In Jesus' precious name we pray. And all of God's people said, amen. Thank you. you may be seated. Continue to learn. Continue to learn. You know, I remember uh, being in... Uh, grade school and thinking, boy, I'd be so glad to be done with learning, you know, and, uh, and then when I was in high school, I was like, man, when I get out of high school, I am done with learning, and uh, then I went to Bible college, and there was some learning I did, and I was like, okay, boy, I, when I get done with Bible college, I'll be done with learning, and then, uh, you know, I learned how to drive truck, and there were some things I had to learn of that. And, and then I had my home improvements business, and I mentioned it during the, the uh, Sunday school. I had to, had to learn how to build decks, and, you know, people were like, hey, can you do this? I'm like, okay, well, I had to learn how to do some of those things. Nowadays, we have uh, what we call, my wife and I, we call it YouTube University. And, uh, boy, if there's anything you want to learn, you can probably look it up on YouTube and find it, amen? Uh, recently, uh, uh, my son had bought a car, and, and and uh, uh, he was like, uh, hey, I would like to get this code to, uh, uh, you know, he's, he's got a keyless entry on his vehicle. And, and uh, so I told him, I said, hey, let's look this up. So I looked it up and, and they're like, well, you got to do this and you got to pull this out and then you can see it there and then you can uh, see it over there. And I was like, okay. And uh, uh, so we watched YouTube University. I learned how to do that. And, and then my mom, her, uh, her car, uh, I forget what it was, something uh, with the driver side uh, actuator. I think that's what it was called. And uh, I'd never, never done that in my life. And, and, uh, but I'm like, you know what? I watch YouTube University. And so I'm watch, watching the YouTube University and watch, I'm like, oh, okay. So you take this part of the panel off and then you have to get back into this side. And, and uh, there was one part I couldn't get. My fingers are too big. And finally, Timothy got off of work. I'm like, boy, he goes, you, you having problems? I'm like, yeah, I can't get this one screw started. He goes, oh, okay. Bing! He got them both in there. I'm like, oh, well, thanks for putting that together. I wish you would have been here a little bit sooner, amen? Save me two hours of just trying with my big stubby fingers trying to get those stupid things in there. And, and, uh, but nonetheless, you know, uh, in life, you never stop learning, amen? There's constantly, I, you've probably heard this, you know, uh, uh, that you can always learn something new every day. You know, uh, that's something that uh, you've probably heard that saying before. And the, uh, the Christian life is one of learning and growing. There is a constant ebb and flow in the Christian, uh, uh, the spiritual life, I'm sorry, the spiritual life of a Christian. In the sense that if we don't keep a sensitive heart to the things of God, then we go backwards. We uh, learn from the trials of our faith and then we should grow uh, forward from there. Sadly, some Christians stay in the infantile state uh, of their Christian life. They never truly really grow uh, because they didn't learn from uh, their mistakes or they didn't learn the lesson that the Lord was trying to teach them the last time. You know, I think of this, uh, the children of Israel, the reason why they were in the wilderness because they didn't learn to follow the Lord and obey him. You know, all he said was, follow me and obey me and, uh, you know, go into the promised land. If, if they would have gone into the promised land, they would have never wandered around uh, for 40 years. Instead, they were like, oh, man, there's giants in the land. We can't go. God said, no, it's okay. No, no, we can't go because there's giants in the land. God said, no, I'll fight for you. Amen. And yet because of that, they end up wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. And sadly, there are a lot of Christians that are like that. They, they uh, uh, you know, wander around in the, in the uh, spiritual wilderness of their life because they aren't willing to continue to learn what the Lord is trying to teach them. So today we'll look at what Paul told Timothy here in our text, what these things mean and how they apply to you and me today. We've got four things that hopefully will be a help and encouragement to each of you. First of all, number one, never get to the point where you cannot continue to learn. Never get to the point where you cannot continue to learn. Amen? Notice what it said back in our text there in verse number 14. Paul is challenge, challenging Timothy here. He says, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. 
He's challenging Timothy here to never get to the point where he cannot continue to, grow, to learn and grow. You know, we may have learned and gotten uh, uh, down a part of a lesson in our life, but oftentimes we miss something. You know, you ever been listening to somebody and then you ask them, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Can you repeat that again? Amen. I had somebody recently, I was talking with them and I wasn't really paying attention to them like I know I should have. And I had to say, I'm sorry, what did you just say again? Can you repeat that? Why? Because there was something I missed. And sometimes the Lord is trying to tell us something and trying to show us something and he's repeating it many times and we just miss it. Amen? Sometimes because we aren't listening. Or we're listening to, to maybe perhaps not to necessarily learn, but to, uh, maybe we're listening with the intent to uh, uh, just to give an excuse or give an answer back and say, well, you know, this is why I didn't do this. You know, there are times I've, I've told my children, hey, listen to understand. Don't listen to answer back. Listen to understand. I've had to talk to some people about that many times. Hey, listen to just understand, amen? As a Christian, we need to be willing to listen and say, Lord, what is it you're trying to teach me? What is it, I, I know there's probably some things that I'm lacking, some areas in my life that uh, I need to grow in. And so, Lord, would you just show me those areas of my life so that I can learn, so that I can grow, so that I can be a, a, a more pleasing Christian to you, amen? That should be our goal as, as a Christian, to please our Heavenly Father. What's sad, though, is that a lot of times people aren't really truly listening. You know, I've been in your shoes. You go through your week, work week, you come to church on Sunday, and, and uh, you know, sometimes you're thinking about, well, what can I do this afternoon? What are we going to eat for lunch? Hey, there, there's some things I need to get going on. You know, when I drove truck, I many times was thinking about the next load. Oh, man, I got to get to uh, uh, such a place. Okay, so tonight... When, I, when we get done with church, if I go home, I'll get my paperwork done. I think I can, if I can leave here by 11 and I can be over to Medford, pick up the trailer there, uh, then I can be down to uh, past uh, Chicago uh, by about three o'clock in the morning, maybe, maybe four o'clock at the very latest. Uh, maybe I can get past that scale. I know that scale is normally open on Monday mornings. If I could just get past that scale, get to that truck stop that's just after that scale, then, then I'll be all right. And that and by the time uh, I've thought all that, the message was done. My dad was saying, all right, let's bow our heads for prayer and, and uh, have the invitation. And, and I'm like, oh, wait, what was this message about? Why? Because I wasn't thinking about it. I was thinking about the next load. I was thinking about the next project. I was thinking about, you know, I've been in your shoes. I've been there. I understand. There are times in our life where we, we get to listening. We, we, aren't, we're, it, we get to the point where we're listening, but not listening. Amen? And we should never get to the point where we're like that. And, and that's what Paul is telling Timothy here. Never get to the point. I know it's a double negative, and you can sit there and say, well, pastor, this is a double negative in a sense, and because of that, it cancels us out. No, no, no. Listen to what I'm telling you. Amen? Never get to the point where you cannot continue to learn. If you get to that point, by the way, God is not done with you when you get to that point. Amen? You say, well, well you're, this is what you're saying. No. Remember Moses? Moses was about 40 years old, and God said, hey, I want you to go to a place. It took him another 40 years. He was 80 years old before he got to the point where he could lead the children of Israel. But it took him 40 years to learn the lesson that God was trying to teach him when he was around 40 years old. Amen? And sometimes in our life, we get to the point where we say, Lord, help me to not be stubborn. Help me to not uh, get to the point where I, I, I'm not uh, listening to you. I'm, I'm not listening to the still small voice of your Holy Spirit. Help me never to get to the point where I say, well, you know, I've arrived, so I don't need to learn anymore. I'm okay. Even as your pastor, I, there's things that I still try to learn. I try to le learn, I try to hone my leadership skills. I try to learn some things from, from the Bible to, to help me be a better pastor. 
I never get to the point where I say, all right, you know, I'm the pastor, so I don't need to learn anything. I don't get that way. And my desire, my prayer for you is that you wouldn't get that way either. Amen? Lord, help us all to to have a sensitive spirit and a sensitive heart to the things of God. And we should never get to the point, though, that we, we cannot continue to learn regardless of our spiritual age. Number one, as far as to continue to learn, never get to the point where you cannot uh, continue to learn. But number two, have childlike faith. Have childlike faith. Look back on our text there. 2 Timothy chapter number three, verse number 15. Paul says this, and that from a child. You know, the apostle Paul is reminding Timothy that as he was a child, he continued to learn. You know, uh, uh, there's a lot of things I learned when I was a kid. I remember uh, learning how to ride a bike. Boy, that was fun. I remember uh, we, my brother and I, we had big wheels. And, and I remember learning how to ride a big wheel wheelie all the way down our hill. We lived on a hill over on London Road uh, for a few years, and, and uh, we'd ride this uh, wheelie all the way down, and, and uh, then we'd get, uh, uh, there were two cars, there was a van, and we had a blue van and a little white Cortina. Uh, it was an English Ford uh, vehicle, and uh, they were parked usually back about five feet uh, before the garage door, and sometimes the garage door was open. If the garage door was open and the garage, uh, you know, that, that spot was uh, empty, then we were able to go into the garage and just, you know, make a quick uh, stop. And we had a lot of fun. But we also learned how to stop within five feet without hitting the garage. We never hit the garage, praise the Lord. My mom would always see us going down the hill and she'd be praying, oh Lord. And we'd, I mean, just stop right there, right before we uh, would hit the garage door and and, uh, we'd do it again. Amen. Why? There was a lot of things we learned as a kid learned how to shoot a gun. My dad taught me how to shoot a gun and, and uh, became very proficient in shooting. And boy, it was a lot, it's a lot of fun, amen? But over the, over the course of time, I was willing to learn some things. I remember uh, when I was driving truck, I had driven truck for about five years and, and uh, went to drive for a local company and they said, hey, uh, we want you to go to this course over at uh, 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 the uh, Chippewa Valley Technical College. And we want you to take this course to learn how to get out of a, a skid or, or out of a jackknife. I had already been driving for five years, five, almost six years. In my mind, I'm like, I already know how to do this. But I went with the intent. To th- I thought, well, okay, maybe there's something I can learn. There was actually quite a few things I learned uh, by going through that course. I was like, oh, oh, that that helps me a little bit better. It helped me to be a better driver, amen? Uh, There are things that that we can learn in in life, and we need to be willing to say, Lord, uh, I want to have that childlike faith, though, and and to the point where we just say, Lord, uh, if you're going to show me something, Lord, I'm going to listen to you, amen? That's what Paul is telling them here. He said, Paul, or, or Timothy, I want you to have this childlike faith. You know, it's amazing how, how uh, children are so trusting, amen, and how much faith they have. If you were to take a child and put them on a, a high point, especially a little child, like, you know, two, three, four years old, and you say, hey, jump. They don't sit there and say, well, I'm not sure that you're big enough to, to handle me. I don't know that I can jump and this distance here. Uh, you know, no, they don't do that, do they? You say jump, and what do they do? Amen? Why? They're, they're trusting you. They're trusting you to catch them. They're trusting you that you're going to uh, take care of them, that you're not going to let them fall. Amen? But you see, that's the kind of faith that God wants us to have. That simple, childlike faith. When God says, hey, jump. And you don't sit there and question God and say, well, God, I don't know about this. This seems kind of kind of high here. Hey, this this seems kind of hard here, Lord. This I'm not sure that I can trust you for this. God wants us to just trust Him. And say, okay, Lord, I may not understand this. I may not comprehend all of it. 
But Lord, I'm gonna trust you. Lord, I'm gonna have that faith in you. Lord, I know you're able to do the impossible. Look with me, if you will, at Matthew chapter number 19. Matthew chapter number 19. In Matthew chapter number 19, there's a principle here that I want you to see. Matthew chapter number 19 and verse number 14. In verse number 13, it says, Then uh, were there brought unto him little children that he should put his hands on them and pray, and the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Suffer little children and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of, uh, of heaven. You know, God wants us to have that sh- simple childlike faith, then come to him and say, Lord, uh, I'm going to trust you. You know, uh, by the way, this is repeated in, uh, 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 Jesus repeats this in Mark chapter number 10, verse number 14, and Luke chapter number 18, verse number 16. <clears throat> now listen carefully. Go with me to Luke chapter number 18. Luke chapter number 18. Luke chapter number 18. And if you look at uh, Luke chapter number 18, Remember the first uh, about eight verses, he's dealing with the context of prayer. Remember that? He says, uh, in verse number uh, one, it says this, and he spake a parable unto them to this man, and that man ought always to pray and not, what? And not to faint. Verse number eight says this, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, notice this next phrase, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find what? Faith on the earth. You see, God wants us to just trust him. He doesn't want us to sit there and question him, analyze things. You know, I have a very analytical mind. My, my mind works differently, and, and it's weird. I'm a weirdo, I know. You, you didn't, I'm not telling you anything new today, all right? But I'll, I'll sit there and many times analyze things and, and I, I think about, okay, if I do this, how will this happen and you know, so on and so forth. But as a Christian, we have to get to the point where we just say, okay, Lord, you said trust. I'm just gonna trust you. Amen? I'm not gonna question you. I'm not gonna doubt you. I'm not gonna analyze things. And as a child, we, we, we have that complete faith that, those that were adults would catch us. And that's the kind of simple childlike faith that God wants us to have in him. Lord, help me to just trust you. I, I, I don't want to sit there and doubt you. I don't want to sit there and, and question you. Oh, Lord, I just, I just want to trust you. So in order to continue to learn, we have to have that childlike faith. Number one, uh, to continue to learn, I mean, never, never get to the point where you cannot continue to learn. Number two, have childlike faith. Number three, get to know the scriptures. Get to know the scriptures. Look back in our text there. Second Timothy chapter number three, verse number 14. I'm sorry, verse number 15. I'm sorry, I, I think I said well, 14, didn't I? I, I meant 15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. Thou hast known the holy scriptures. You know, Paul was giving Timothy a quick history lesson. He was reminding Timothy that he had been in the scriptures for quite some time. Some people, they know enough about the Bible, the word of God, to just bug them. You know, they, they know, uh, you know, just a little bit. Well, you know, God said, uh, you know, God will help those who help themselves. You know, the Bible says... Uh, that verse is, there's no verse like that in the Bible, amen? Now, there may be a principle that's similar to that, but that actual, those actual words, that's not in the Bible. It's like this. I've heard people say, well, you know, in the, in the Constitution, it says separation of church and state. I'll give $10,000 right now to anybody that can show me from the Constitution that it's in the Constitution, because I guarantee you it's not there, Amen? And that includes anybody online as well. Because it's not there. My wife was like, wait a, wait a second, honey. Hold on. That's, our, that's our savings there you're talking about. Hold on. Look, I know nobody can find it. Amen? Because it's not there. 
The problem with some Christians, they, they think there's something that's in the Bible that isn't really there. They know enough to bug them, but not enough to bless them. You know, they, they know enough about the scriptures. You know, uh, some may even be able to, uh, uh, they know about John three sixteen, possibly quote it. But then for some, that is the extent of their knowledge of the Bible. Or they've seen it, you know, held up at, at football games. You know, you used to see it all the time, by the way. I was talking with somebody recently. I said, I haven't seen it in a couple of years. Uh, they intentionally do not show those things on, on television. They, you know, immediately change the camera angle or whatever. But, you know, some people know John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen? But if that's the extent of your Bible knowledge, Christian, I want to challenge you. Uh, you got to get some more. Amen? You got to learn some more. You got a lot more to learn. And the problem with some Christians is they're not learning what they need to know. Some may be able to say, uh, you know, uh, Matthew 7, uh, 1, where it says, judge not that you be not judged. Yeah, pastor, you're not to judge me because the Bible says, judge not that you be not judged. You know, do you good? Do you good to read the rest of that passage? Because then he goes on to say, you know, why are you, point let's actually go there real quick. Like, I want to show you this. Matthew chapter number seven. I want you to see it for yourself. Verse number one says, judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure uh, ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote uh, uh, out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite. Now, here's how he changes the, the course here. He's saying, hey, how is it that you're looking at somebody else's toothpick, and you've got a telephone, pick, uh, a telephone pole sticking out of yours, and you're saying, hey, you got this toothpick in your eye. Let me pull it out for you. And God says, hey, you got this telephone pole that's uh, you know, sticking out blaringly out of your own eye. How are you going to do this? But notice how he changes course here. He says, thou hypocrite, first... Cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. He says, hey, here's what you need to do. You want to pull out their toothpick, you take care of that telephone pole first. Once you've taken care of that telephone pole, now you can go to them, hey, let me help you here, amen? Why? He's saying, hey, don't be a hypocrite. That's what he's talking about. The problem with a lot of Christians, they know enough, uh, uh, you know, and this is why, I think this is why the world a lot of times will, will say, wow, you know, the, the uh, Christians are just a bunch of hypocrites. Why? Because we know enough Bible to quote to them and say, you know, hey, you need to get that uh, toothpick out of your eye. And they're saying, hey, wait a second, you got a telephone pole in your eye. Why don't you take care of that first? That's why the world looks at us and says, hey, there's a bunch of hypocrites there. And that's funny to me when people say, well, I don't go to church because there's a bunch of hypocrites in church. It never stops anybody from going to Walmart or wherever else, amen? Some will go to the bar, and there's hypocrites at the bar, amen? Not that the bar is a good place to go. Don't go there, amen? But you see, if you knew your Bible, let me back up. Some Christians will even believe what a movie puts in about God or the Bible, and then uh, your pastor has to come along and try to disprove what they believe uh, is true. I had a gentleman one time, he watched this guy on YouTube, and he said, see, pastor, he said this. This is true. And I said, no, it's not. He goes, prove it to me. <laughs> I'm sitting there, I'm like, now, why should I have to prove? I said, you're listening to this guy. You don't even know who this guy is. This guy don't even know who you are. I said, I know who this guy is. I said, he's a heretic. I said, everything he teaches is a heresy. I said, the problem is, is you're listening to this guy as if it's gospel, and now I have to try to disprove him. I said, what, you want me to get a YouTube channel and just say, hey, this guy's a liar? I said, I'll do that if that's what you want me to do. If, if just because he's on YouTube, you think he's true, I said, that's, that's a wrong philosophy. Amen? You know, it's sad that there's a lot of Christians that believe what the Hollywood, you know, if it, well, it was in a movie, so, you know, Satan must... I watched The Passion of the Christ, and, and I saw Satan walk through the crowd. That must have been what happened. 
The problem is, is that people don't know their Bible. If you knew your scripture and knew the Bible, then you'd know that, you know, there's some good things about some movies. You know, praise the Lord for a pa- the movie of Passion of Christ. If you, if you sit there and say, well, I don't like it. Okay, fine. That, I'm not offended. Amen? If you say, well, everything in there is true. No, hold on a second. Now, we're, we'll have a, now, now we'll have a, a difference here. Amen? Not everything that was in that movie was true. Amen? There are some things that, again, it's Hollywood. But you and I have to realize, hey, God is trying to show us some things, some truth, and uh, we need to know the scriptures. If you knew your Bible, you'd recognize that Hollywood almost always gets uh, anything in the Bible wrong. But if you would get to know the Bible, you would recognize that not every event and book in the Bible even happened Genesis through Revelation. There are some people that think everything that happened, it happened Genesis all the way to Revelation. Which that isn't true. Yes, there are some things at the beginning. Genesis, yep, there's a lot of good things. Amen? But by the time you get to Exodus, there's some things that are recorded in other scriptures that are pointing back and they're, they're uh, coinciding events. Amen? By the time you get into, uh, you know, First and Second uh, Samuel, First and Second Kings, all those, now you got some prophets that are being written. And uh, uh, the prophets are prophesying about some things that are happening or have happened or about to happen. Amen? Jeremiah, remember, uh, uh, remember when the children of Israel were taken into captivity? Jeremiah was written while he was in, a, in captivity and while he was in Jerusalem, amen? Both times. And you and I need to realize, hey, God's word is there to help me to have a walk with God. This is why I've been trying to encourage every single person, read your Bible, know the word of God. Get into God's word. It's not there. It's not. We're not having church just for you to come so I can fill up some time and space and be able to say, okay, well, I went to church. Hey, thanks, pastor. You know, glad you read the Bible. I'm going home. Look, read your Bible when you get home. You say, well, I can't read. Look, I could, I could look up YouTube right here, right now, and I could say, hey, uh, have the King James Bible read to me. And guess what could happen? I could, uh, I got an app right here that I had, uh, hopefully it doesn't go to a commercial. I'll just go into a commercial, you stupid thing. Anyways, uh, it's a progressive commercial. There we go, okay. Anyways, I'm in the book of Leviticus. I'm almost actually done with Leviticus. I should be in the book of Numbers, but I'm, I'm behind just a couple of chapters. But, uh, uh, and then it'll probably, oh, there it goes. Now he's starting to read, all right? There he goes. Anyways, uh, you can have the Bible read, read to you. You can actually, on this one, you can actually see what the guy is reading right here. You can put it on a screen. You can do all kinds of things, amen? There's all kinds of technology. For us, you know, we have a, a, a Bible on a tape. We have it on a CD. There's all kinds of opportunities for you to read your Bible, Amen? Just read it. Get to know it. The more you get to know, the more you'll be able to continue saying, hey, I know what pastor's talking about here. Hey, I heard heard him uh, talk about this, and this is what Jesus was talking to, to the disciples about, and whatever it is. But you know, your pastor is not always going to be around to give you some scripture to, to be a help to you. There are times I have people you know, text me or call me or, hey, pastor, I'm going through this. Would you, do you have some scripture for this? And yes, I'll do that. Amen. But I'm not always going to be around. You know, uh, I'm 48. I'm a realist, all right? The reality is I could die today. This could be my last message I ever preach. I say, well, I hope not. I hope not either, amen? But the reality of it is this, that could happen. Your faith should not be dependent upon me. We'll see that here in just a moment. You should be willing to say, Lord, help me to get into your word so that I can get to know you more, get to know your principles more, get to know your, uh, uh, what you desire, how, me, how you want me to live. 
You need to familiarize yourself with the Word of God. You need to know the Bible so that you can uh, navigate through the Bible and find uh, some of those things that are going to be helpful to you and your Christian walk. You know, be able to say, hey, where, I wonder where I'd be, find the encouragement. Oh, yeah, I remember pastor said, I ought to read, uh, don't read the book of Revelation, but read the book of Psalms to find, uh, find encouragement. Amen? You're going to find encouragement. You want to know about victories? Get in the book of Joshua. Man alive, there's uh, victory after victory in there. Yeah, uh, they fail a couple times, but praise the Lord for the victories, amen? Why? It shows our humanity. It helps us understand, hey, we got to rely upon the Lord, amen? You just got to get into God's word. Familiarize yourself with it. Get to know the scriptures. You want to continue to learn, number one, never get to the point where you cannot continue to learn. Number two, have childlike faith. Number three, get to know the scriptures. And lastly, number four, continue to gain wisdom and faith. Continue to gain wisdom and faith. Look back on our text there, verse number 15. 2 Timothy chapter number three, verse number 15. It says, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Paul is also challenging Timothy that the scriptures will make him wise and help him in his faith. In context here, he's reminding Timothy that the scriptures are there to help him understand and have wisdom about salvation. All right, that's what he's talking about in context there. But then he also mentions that it is through faith in Christ Jesus. The principle here is this. As a Christian, you should gain wisdom from the Bible. The more that you are in it, the more you'll continue to grow. Amen? This in turn helps your faith grow. So let me ask you this. How's your faith grown lately? Amen? So, well, not as much as it would. It probably should. Then get into your Bible. The more you get into the Bible, boy, the more you're going to be able to say, wow, my God can do the impossible. My God can do great things. Wow, my God can speak the world into existence. My God knows the very hairs of my head. Some of you, it's pretty easy to keep track of, amen? But to know that your God cares about you, amen? The Bible even tells us things like casting all your care upon him, why? For he careth for you, Amen? Get into the word of God. You say, well, where is that, pastor? First Peter, I think it's First Peter, Second Peter, chapter five, whichever it is, whichever uh, uh, Peter has five chapters, uh, verse number seven. Casting all you care upon him, for he careth for you. Amen? You and I need to be willing to say, Lord, help me to get into your word so I have that knowledge, so I'm able to be able to say, okay, I want to grow in my faith. Do you trust the Lord more than you, than you did a year ago? Do you trust them now more than you did five years ago? Oh, some may say, well, I can trust them for salvation, but I, I have to figure out everything else on my own. <clears throat> Where do you find that in the Bible? Amen? Just trust the Lord. Just say, Lord, I'm going to trust you. This should not be your attitude about God just to, uh, you know, saying, well, I'll just figure out everything else on my own and the things of God. Be willing to say, Lord, I'm going to trust you. It should be that you can gain godly wisdom from the word and then grow in your faith and that the Lord uh, can do uh, uh, and what the Lord can do and accomplish in and through your life. Be willing to say, Lord, I want to continue to learn. I don't want to get to the point where I can't learn anything. Lord, help us to have uh, an attitude of just being willing to say, Lord, work in my life. Lord, use me. I'm, I'm still here. Amen. You know, by the way, listen carefully. If you're still living and breathing, which everybody here today is, praise the Lord, keep living and breathing, amen? But I'll tell you this, God's not done with you. You say, well, I messed up. Praise the Lord for a God that's merciful, amen? Praise the Lord for a God of forgiveness, amen? Well, I messed up twice this last week. I messed up five times in this last month. Messed up seven times yesterday. It must be the number of perfection, Pastor. I'm perfectly messing up. The Bible tells us a righteous man falleth seven times and he riseth up again. I'm glad that we can rise up again. I'm glad that we can continue. Amen. 
I'm glad we don't have to stay down in the ditch. I'm glad we can get back up right on the path that God has for us. But you have to be willing to continue to learn. So let me ask you this. How's your faith today? Have you grown spiritually lately? Will you continue to learn? Let's bow our heads for prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around. I'm just going to ask a couple of quick questions and we'll have a hymn of invitation. I want to invite you to come and talk with the Lord, come and do business with him. Perhaps you're here today, you'd say, Pastor, I don't know if I'm saved. I, I'm not 100% sure if heaven's my eternal home. But I'd like to be, be sure. I'd like to get saved. Pastor, in this brief prayer, would you pray for me? Would you indicate the need just by slipping your hand up and slip it back down? I'll see your hand. God knows your heart's need. Pastor, pray for me. I don't know if I'm saved. Would you pray for me? The other question is this then. You say, Pastor, I know I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven. But would you pray for me that I'd continue to learn? I, there's some things, some lessons I know the Lord's tried to taught and teach me in the past, and I, I just, I, I know I missed them. I know I wasn't listening. I don't want to get to the point where I, I think I know it all, and I don't want to get to the point where I, I think I've got it all figured out. I want to have that simple childlike faith. I want to get to know the scriptures. And I want to make sure that I can continue to gain wisdom and faith and I want, I want to continue to grow. I, I don't want to stay where I'm at spiritually. I want, to, I want to go forward. I want to continue. God spoke to my heart during the message today. Pastor, would you pray for me? Would you indicate that need just by slipping your hand up and slipping back down? I'll see your hand. God knows your heart's need. Well, there are hands all over this auditorium here today. Thank you. We slip them down. Anybody else? Pastor, pray for me. God spoke to my heart. I didn't raise my hand a moment ago. Yes, I see that hand. I see that one as well. Anybody else? Pastor, pray for me. Yes, I see this one as well. Anybody else? Thank you. We slip them down. God's word in my heart. Would you pray for me? Here's what I want to encourage you to do. I want to encourage you to pray. Lord, would you help me to continue to learn? Lord, help me to never get to the point where I think I've got it all figured out, or I think I've got it all, uh, no, I know it all. Lord, would you help me to continue just to follow you, obey you, learn from you? All of us can have that attitude. Amen. All of us can have that prayer. I want to encourage you. You can use these steps as an old-fashioned altar if it fills up. You can use the, st the chairs in the front. If, if that fills up, you can use the aisle. If God spoke to your heart, I want to encourage you to come. Won't you come, Heavenly Father? Thank you for speaking to hearts. Help us to continue to learn. Lord, help us to never get to that point where we think we've got it all figured out. Help us to follow you, obey you. Help us to listen to your still small voice during this invitation time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everyone stand to their feet, every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around. If God's spoken to your heart, I want